Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Mod Santa. I'm Hazdi. Last time we went out and explored the desert for the first time and I overloaded you with so much information about the desert that you're probably never going to want to go there again. Probably a good thing since it's a desert, but never mind. We're going to talk to this guy here. Start off the episode. What? You again? Hey, tell you what. Let me tell you a little story. A famous hunter with a big ego challenged a gigantic horned wife into a battle, but he ended up getting his leg hurt and quit the hunter business. And then the guy started living day to day in a small village. What happened next? Nothing. That's the, exact, that's the end of it. What? Don't you like my story? Okay, so that guy is alluding to this famous hunter, where have we heard that before? Maybe previous episodes, some guy was sort of fanboying over a famous hunter a little bit too much, but never mind. Let's talk to the chief and take our next quest, which is... Not that one, this one, Slay the Iron Cuckoo. So it's a reward of 900 zenny, I think that's slightly less than the last one. Contract of 200 zenny, which I think is actually higher than the last one, but never mind. We have less time than last time, so 40 minutes, but it's in the forest and hills. So that should be a little bit easier, hopefully. So Slay the Iron Cuckoo, hopefully I won't die this time, but never mind. The requester is a macho guardsman. A bird like Yain Cuckoo. A bird like Yain Cuckoo? Aren't they bird like anyway? Never mind. A bird like Yain Cuckoo is attacking people all over the place. Show me what you've made of by taking it out. They're attacking them all over the place and yet they're not doing anything at the moment. They're just taking their time, sending us a message saying, hey, would you mind coming and taking care of this at some point? I don't know. Maybe when you have enough money. I don't know. Never mind. Let's head out and deal with the threat. Take down this Yain Cuckoo, which is threatening people all over the place, apparently. It's taking them out. I, I don't know. Where are these people? I mean, there is no one else in this entire area. Unless this area is just completely emptied for every quest that comes here. Or something. I don't know. That kind of seems like an inconvenience if that's the way. But never mind. Let's head over to the chest. And this time, instead of having a pack full of too many things, because I was trying to show off everything you could use, I've... Reduced the stuff in my pack. I've still got too many flash bombs, smoke bombs. I don't know if I showed this off last time, but they're pretty much useless. They do this. I know, it's fantastic. When is that going to be helpful? I mean, it's meant to blur the creature's sight of you, but they can find you anyway. I mean, if you're trying to get away from small monsters, that might be helpful, and the smoke follows you for some reason all the way around the area. I don't quite get it myself, but never mind. Actually, I don't think it goes quite all the way around the area, but it follows you for quite a bit of it. But never mind, we're going to head up to, I believe, Area 3 to begin with. So let's head on up there. Because I think that's where the monster, that's where the Yarn Cuckoo goes most often. That's where you're going to find it most of the time, so let's head there. There is no intro cutscene for this one, so you're supposed to go and hunt the one in the jungle first, so I suggest going doing that one first, even though that's probably the harder of the two, despite this one having less time. Um, less time, this one is probably easier due to the fact that the forest and hills is one of the easiest places to hunt in due to it not having as reduced visibility as the jungle. So let's head on down to the other end of this area. And something I pretty much know by habit is that if it doesn't appear in here by... 38 minutes into this quest, it's going to a different area, so let's wait here for 29 seconds while I buy time. As you can see, I'm using a great sword, I forgot to mention that, so let's show this off. Let's pull it out, look at that, looks pretty badass. This weapon requires veloc not, Velocidrome claws to make, so that's the overhead attack. That's quite a heavy attack, and as you can see, it's here. So if you press up and then down, and then not, no, up and then left or right and then up and do that continuously. You'll do this attack. If you press down, you either do a sort of a wide swing or you will do a sort of backwards slash like that. So you can really easily combo a lot of attacks together like that. However, be aware you are very slow with this weapon. What you can, but what you can do is you can block like that, but remember that takes away a bit of your sharpness, so if you're not careful, your weapon will become blunter faster than you expect, so let's just get in here. Let's keep slashing, because if you keep slashing, I'm probably going to get stepped on here, there we go, I took a bit of damage, but if you keep swinging, you'll do not be affected by the wind resistance, not the wind resistance, the wind 
buffeting you, so block there because I knew I could get out of the way of that. Let's reassess our attack pattern. Let's go there. I would suggest attacking this from the right. I didn't really go over the Yain Cuckoo as a enemy that much because I was trying to explain the hammer. But I suggest coming at it from the right because it always rotates. I think it's clockwise, so you want to stay on the right where you can dodge easily. Probably not the best place to... Oh no, it's fine. Not the best place to heal because, well, he's going to do that. Let's get back in here and keep swinging. So yeah, my one of my favourite weapons is the Great Sword just because of how powerful it is. And there we go, that's an, that's an example of me bouncing off because my weapon's not quite sharp enough. Something that you may encounter that I won't is that this set of armour, it makes you immune to unconsciousness. So these big attacks that it's hitting me with, so if it shot a fireball at me and I rolled and then I got hit by it charging at me, it will probably make me dizzy and I won't be able to get away. I can't really show off what it's like, but I'll probably show off eventually. Just from, just so you know, you have to spin the uh, the analog stick round in a circle several times until you become undizzy. You'll slowly lose the stars over your head, so you can tell when you're slowly becoming undizzy. So just be warned that if you take a lot of attacks, that may be the major killer in this fight, is that it will pin you up against a wall. Ooh, that was close. Um, it will pin you up against a wall and just continually hit you with like three or four attacks and you'll just go down to so be warned. That is something you've got to watch out for. Something else I suggest, don't get too cocky, you will get destroyed the instant you get too cocky. Something else, <laughs> I'm just saying something else, that's like another catchphrase of mine now. For this LP, something else. You are something else, but no, something else you need to be careful of is area barriers. Area barriers, if you get pinned up against one of those, they can be very annoying because you won't roll as far as you normally would and they can just continually attack you from where they were. I thought it was going to ram me there, but it's going to bounce back. I'm thinking that I'll probably get away with doing this without losing a life. Oh no, I've jinxed it. Alright, let's throw a flash bomb. There we go. Oh, it didn't work. I'm not sure about this, but I don't think flash bombs work when it's in rage mode. That's going to hurt. Ow. But if I can get to that over there. Go. I don't know why I'm not using uh, power juice. Oh, it's over there now. I thought it was over there. So that's why you really need to pay attention to where it is. Everything I said about don't get pinned against walls and things is ex is like 10 times more worrying when it's in rage mode, so just be careful when that happens because it will destroy you and 10 times, not 10 times, like 5 times out of 10, that's the reason why you will get um, sort of attacked. Oh, there we go, I've won, <laughs> that was pretty easy, less than 10 minutes and I've won. Yeah, Rage Mode plus Area Barrier is one of the reasons why you're going to lose this fight most of the time. So there we go, that was a pretty easy fight with everything I was carrying. I didn't even leave this area, I just destroyed it with large barrel bombs and a pitfall trap. That just shows how good this weapon is and that this monster isn't actually as tough as it looks. So there we go, that's this quest done in record time, I mean... That is pretty fantastic. Let's just smack it in the face with a great sword. There we go. So that's pretty good. Something else that I might mention is that if you hold down R1, you will maintain that pose even after the uh, reward screen pops up because for some reason it doesn't cancel it out. Because um, normally you'll do like an animation like hurrah I've won sort of animation, but for some reason if you're holding like a shield up or a great sword in front of your face, you won't do that. You refuse to celebrate. But Whatever, that's just a cool, well not really cool, just a weird thing that I know of for some reason. It doesn't work in later games, they fixed it, but there we go. He's just going to maintain that pose for all eternity. So yeah, that quest was a bit rambly, I'm sorry about that. That was just sort of how it went, because I was trying to explain great swords and fight it seriously. Wow, that reward screen. That, I got nine screamers and one shell. That is awful. Just wow. Never mind, we get the full reward. I didn't die this time, that's fantastic. So yeah, great swords, I'm better at using great swords. It's one of my more preferred weapons. I think I was trying to say that at some point, but then got distracted. 
or whatever, but never mind, there we go, we've got a lot of Zenny now, not quite as much as I spent on those large barrel bombs, so that's a thing. In these quests, if you're trying to grind money, don't buy large barrel bombs, because they will eat through about 1,500 Zenny. I only got 1,100, actually I only got 900 back from that, so even if I sell off everything I got, it probably won't cover that. So I wouldn't suggest buying large barrel bombs for grinding money. I suggest just taking it on head on, just fighting it with just your weapon. But there we go, that's another quest. That quest was a hell of a lot shorter than the last quest we did. Okay, sorry about that little jump up there. I got interrupted by something and suddenly remembered that I was going to miss out on something if I ended off the episode right then and there. Is that you can now get, or you could get from the previous Cuckoo quest, the Yarn Cuckoo quest, is that you can get Cuckoo armor now. So, I'm going to cover that right now. Okay, and the only set of armor we're talking about today is the Cuckoo armor. And as you can see, it's only got three pieces to it. However, that doesn't hinder it in any way. It's still a fantastic set of armor. As you can see, it's got 30 defense. It's got negative 15 water resistance. However, you won't be seeing water for quite a long period of time. But water, water damage. Uh, it's got negative 3 thunder resistance. Again, you won't be seeing that for a long period of time, so it's not a problem. It's quite an easy set of armor to get, and it comes with the ability Attack Up Small. Attack Up Small, just as you guessed, increases your attack up, which is fantastic ability to have. So I would highly suggest getting this armor if you want that ability. You can also combine it with other bits of armor to create different abilities, which could also just be as awesome. However, I'll be going over those much later in the LP. In a bonus episode, I'll go over all the armor abilities. So if you're interested in that, you're going to have to wait a little while. But before then, we're going to move on to the Gunner Armor. And as you can see, for the Gunner Armor, the defense has nearly been cut in half, but the fire resistance has jumped up to 9, which is fantastic for this point in the game, since that's the only element you're going to be seeing until about 5 star. The others have also gone up. Water resistance has gone up as well. Obviously, it's gone up to negative 3, so you're not going to be damaged as much by that. However, again, the same things apply as they did for the Blade Master armor. I wouldn't suggest using this armor that late in the game. It's still a really good set of armor, still shares the attack up ability, and I would highly suggest it for anyone at this point in the game if you really want a good set of armor. But I've said enough for now about this set of armor, so back to the video. Okay, and now that we've shown that, I want to say the reason why I didn't show that off in the original Yain Cuckoo hunting quest is that I didn't want to overload that episode just as much as I had because I'd already had bios and explanations of hammers and things and that. I didn't want to overload it too much and I was cutting away for the medium monster bone bios anyway. So I just put it here, separate it out a bit just so it flowed a bit better. So there we go. Now that we covered those, I would say that's enough for now. So thank you very much for joining me for Let's Play Monster Hunter. Next time, we're going to go out and do some more three star quests. Maybe get close to finishing off the last few because I think we've only got two left i know there's not that many well not as many as you would think despite the, the fact that they're not always there but never mind so until next time like comment subscribe and all the other good stuff i've been hasdi and i'll see you next time